Today we're going to be changing a set of drum brakes on a vehicle. If you're not sure what types of brakes your vehicle has, do a quick search online for your make, model, and trim level and you should be able to figure out pretty quickly. Know that many modern vehicles have drum brakes on the rear wheels and disc brakes on the front wheels, so your vehicle may actually have two different types of braking systems. But today we're going to be focusing on drum brake replacement. And there's three main components that you would be replacing if you want to do a thorough brake job like I do. In the top right of this photo, you'll see the main component, that is the drum itself. It's a big cast iron bowl. In the top left, you see the shoes. The brake shoes are what has the, the wear material, the grippy wear material, that rub against the inside of the drum and slow your vehicle down. Then in the bottom of the photo, you'll see a bag of springs. Those springs just work to help keep the shoes in place and tie them to each other. So we're going to be replacing all these things, so let's get started. So step one is to remove a wheel so that you can get to the brake drum. I actually suggest that you loosen the lug nuts with the vehicle still on the ground so that the wheel's not trying to turn as you loosen the lug nuts. I was fighting that here. But once you get the lug nuts off, you might have to kick the wheel a little bit just to break it loose if it's stuck to the drum like mine was. Um, but then the wheel's off and you can get to the drum. Now that you have access to the drum, the next step is to remove the drum itself. On a smaller vehicle like mine, you'll probably have a nut in the center that is actually holding the drum onto the vehicle. So we need to remove that nut next. It's covered up by a tin dust cover that you need to remove with a hammer and punch. Um, try to save it because in, if you're like me, you do not have a new one, but you do want a dust cover on there in the end. So get that dust cover off if you have a small vehicle like mine and then remove the nut. So once you've removed the dust cover and nut, if applicable, the next step is the fun part of pulling the drum off of the vehicle. So this is often difficult because the old shoes will have worn a groove on the inside of the drum and the drum simply will not want to slide back over the shoes. But you can do it. It's not really that complicated. It just takes a hammer, patience, and maybe a pry bar or a puller like you saw here. Once you get the drum off, the next step is the puzzle of removing the shoes and springs. So I'm about to go into detail about how I removed the shoes and springs from my particular car. Know that these details will vary quite a bit from vehicle to vehicle just because of the differences and the spring orientations and pin locations and bracketry and everything. So don't get too caught up in these details unless you also have a Ford Focus or similar Ford vehicle. Um, but I'm going to go through it thoroughly so that you understand the step-by-step -step process that I went through and perhaps yours will be similar or you can at least learn something through my methodology. Um, I put these back together so that they look much like they did when they were on the car so so imagine that they're still on the car. Just for clarification this is the uh, parking brake cable and this is the brake cylinder. So they were on the car like this and the way I took them off was to remove this end of the bottom spring, just pull it out with a pair of pliers, and then remove the spring completely. And then, up here, these two springs are more difficult to remove uh, while it's on the car. And so what I did was I then removed the spring clips, so there's, there's a pin that uh, basically goes in here and here. Um, and so, or yeah, here and here. So there's a, there's a pin that goes through the back of these two, and then there's a clip that goes on the front of the pins. And that, that holds them against the, um, the backing plate here. So what I did was I, after removing this spring, I removed those two clips, uh, and, which allowed the brake shoes to just simply slide off the car. Okay, so it's... Uh, they're still wanting to press against the cylinder up here, but you can do it. You just have to wiggle it off. So then, once once it's on the ground like this, you can then remove the springs by doing the the rear. So this is the rear of the car. So the rear of the top spring, pull it out, and that will allow this front shoe to slide off of this center bracket. Um, so then that shoe's off, and then uh, these two easily uh, come off because you, you take this bracket then and you swing it off of this rear shoe, 
and uh, at that point, once it's once it's out here to the side, you can easily get this end of the spring off, and that, and then the spring comes off the shoe. So, going back together, I would do it in the opposite manner. I would put this spring on this shoe, and then put this spring in this plate. Swing the plate onto the rear shoe, and then um, take the front shoe, put this blue spring on it, and then slide it on the center bracket, slide the shoe on the center bracket, and then connect this point right here, the rear of the top spring. At that point, you'll have these two shoes together, and you can just connect uh, the bottom with this spring once it's on the car. Okay, so once you get these two together with the top bracket and these two blue springs, you can I'll be able to slide it on, stick the pins through the back of those holes, put the clips on, and then connect it with the uh, bottom spring down there. Now the trick is, is when you first go to put those two shoes on, before you put these pins through the back, you're gonna have to fish, I'm gonna have to fish that uh, parking brake cable through this little keyhole right there. See that keyhole? So it goes, goes through the round, you have to spring this out, stick it through the round, and then swing it into the slot. Okay, so that's how the brake shoes will go back on. So a second ago, I mentioned the parking brake cable you see at the bottom there. Keep in mind that on the rear brakes of a vehicle, the parking brake cable can engage the brakes. And if you have your parking brake on, you'll, you'll probably never get your brakes apart. Okay, so when you're working on your rear brakes especially, make sure that your parking brake is disengaged. Okay, so now the last stage here of brake replacement is putting everything back on. So um, we have our, our brake cylinder there we're going to reuse, we're not replacing it. Um, so all we need to do is put the, the pads back on, or the, the shoes back on, the brake shoes, and then the, uh, along with the link that connects the two, and all the springs uh, that hold them together, and then slide the drum back on, and then put this nut back on. You can see that uh, it's a little dirty around there, so I'm just going to um, kind of wipe it clean a little bit. Got my uh, brake cleaner here, and one thing that you really want to use this for is to clean the uh, braking surface of any new brake rotors or drums, and so I'm going to use it on my new brake drum. Uh, but I'm also going to use it here just to clean this up just a little bit. I don't want to spray it on the brake cylinder here uh, just because there's some rubber components and I don't want to damage any of them with the brake cleaner. Brake cleaner is a good cleaner, but uh, it can be a little bit destructive, so avoid plastic parts and rubber parts, unless you know it's safe. Here are the new parts, so you can see that we have uh, brake shoes, uh, but not that link that connects the two. So we're going to reuse this link up here that connects the two brake shoes. We do have new springs though. So here's, here's the new springs and, uh, and spring clips um, that go in these, these two holes. Uh, there's studs and clips that go in there. Okay, so first things first is to take this old assembly apart. And I took it apart when I took it off the car. I just put it back together for demonstration purposes here. This is the bracket that we're going to reuse. I think I'll go ahead and clean it up with a little bit of brake cleaner too. Take our new brake pads and springs, new brake shoes. Sorry, I keep saying pads because I'm used to working on the front brakes. Which are pads and rotors on this Ford Focus. So, this blue spring goes 
in like so. And I'm just copying the old, the old parts, just mimicking them. Okay, and then this side goes in like so. Okay, so that's that's together like it was on the old one. Now, get the second spring. The second spring, a few feet a half in the in the front shoe, and then stick the front shoe like so onto the. Uh, connector bracket, the cross bracket, hook it in like so, and then I'll stretch the left hand side of the spring over here. And it needs a little bit of coaxing to get it tucked back. There we go. So now, now that top spring is in. I cannot put this bottom spring in until I get it on the on the car. So now the next step. I believe is to get the parking brake in this eyelet. There we go. Okay, so I just uh, I stuck the end in that keyhole, in the circle of the keyhole, and then I pulled the spring back on the brake cable and slid it into the slot of the keyhole. Okay, so now I gotta get these brake shoes up into place, which is, looks something like that. So I just com uh, compressed the brake cylinder a little bit um, as I wiggled them up around it, just being careful not to, not to damage the boots of the brake cylinder because they're rubber and obviously Everything else is pretty much metal, so you can damage the rubber if you were not careful. Okay, so now we have two things left to do. We have the bottom spring of the brake shoes, which is this guy right here, and then we have these pegs and springs. What I'm going to do here is is stick stick this pin through this spring clip, like, like so, and then just turn the spring clip. So it's pretty pretty easy. You just gotta compress, compress this spring clip so that you can get it fully over the end of the stud. I'm gonna try to compress the clip with the nose of the top pliers and then grab the, grab the stud with, with the pliers, and then turn the stud with the pliers while the spring clip's compressed. Here we go. Now on to the second side. So I'm pressing against the spring clip to compress it. And then when the stud gets through the hole here, I'm grabbing onto it and then turning it. Okay, this, uh, this side, for some reason, doesn't seem to have as much stud sticking out. I'm having to compress the spring further. Ooh, almost there. There we go. Okay, so that side, that side I went back to compressing the, the clip and then turning the, the stud with uh, two pairs of pliers. I'm just going to turn this clip so where it's facing up. Okay, so they're both, they're both facing up. It just looks like there's more, more space uh, leaving them in that direction. So now, put this last spring in. Didn't want to go in. 
In the video, you just saw me put this bottom spring in, and I actually put it in backwards. I had the coil on the right side. So it didn't look quite right to me, so I looked back in my notes and saw that I had put it in, in fact, backwards. Even though I'd made a video for myself to see how I took it out in the first place. So it just goes to show you really have to document how you take things apart so that you can put them back together correctly. So, so it is now incorrectly. The way you see it is the way that it is supposed to be. And that means that the brake shoes are fully in and now we can move on to the brake drum, the reinstallation or the installation of the new brake drum. So the other thing that um, I did not show on video was the removal of the old ABS ring. So here is the old brake drum in all of its glory. And you can see this shiny bit of steel here. So this is where the old ABS ring was, and it's basically a magnet on a steel cup. So my new brake drum did not come with one, so I had to remove that ABS ring, that magnet, from the brake, the old brake drum right around here, and it just, it was removed by prying up underneath of it, underneath of this ring, uh, until it would pop off. And it required a bit of finessing, uh, because it was on there pretty tight, but uh, it, it did come off, and so this is the old brake drum. And here's the new brake drum after I pressed that ABS ring on there. So you can see it's this black ring right around the center, and it's on a, it's on a steel cup. And so it took a, a little bit of work to get it on there because I didn't have a, a press um, available to, to press it down on there, so I just tapped it on with a hammer. And it's kind of hard because when you tap on the left side, the right side wants to pop up. And when you tap on the right side, the left side wants to pop up. Because it fits on there pretty tight. So it just took uh, some persistence and uh, some, some pretty firm taps with a hammer to get it to seat down around the center ring here. The center tube. So uh, it is now on there, I believe, fully. It actually feels slightly deformed to my finger. Uh, just from the pressing action, pressing it on there, so I feel like uh, it'll be something for me to monitor if I get any ABS lights on my dash. But, but overall, this is how it should look. And so it's now on there, and it's now uh, on there, I believe, all the way. And so the brake drum is ready. So, to put the brake drum on here, we have to remember that the brake shoes need to be uh, adjusted in because they're new. So over time, old brake shoe, shoes will adjust out to compensate for wear because the, the wear material is getting thinner and thinner over time. So the old shoes were adjusted out. The new ones need to be adjusted back in. And I've actually done that already. And uh, the way you do that is by um, taking tension off of the ratcheting mechanism. So pretty much all of these have some sort of ratcheting mechanism that will allow the shoes to inch out, creep out over time, and not return back in. Um, and that's that's the way they're designed, uh, so they compensate for wear. So on this one, there's a spring up in this ratcheting mechanism, and you basically just take your finger and uh, you stretch out the spring, you elongate the spring, so that spring is there to hold the ratcheting mechanism engaged. So you, it keeps the gears engaged with each other. So you stretch out the little spring with your finger down here and it and it disengages the teeth so that you can then relax, you can spin the ratcheting mechanism into a relaxed state. And so that's what I did here and that brought the shoes back in. So the other thing that you have to do before you can slide the drum on is just, just get the shoes basically centered. Um, so the reason I say that is that these shoes will move, so like I'll just lift up on this one or push down, so you can see it, it pushed down there pretty easily. And it's because, it, you know, even though they're retained in with springs and, and clips, uh, they, they really do have a fair amount of wiggle. But the thing is, when you go to put the brake drum on, uh, they need, the brake drum doesn't have much clearance around the shoes, and, and so the shoes need to be pretty centered, otherwise the brake drum will just run into it. And so we can kind of see that here. So I just moved that shoe, and if I go to slip the brake drum on, so 
So it starts to go on, but it won't go on any further. And I can feel that it's hitting on the right side because the left side will go on a little further than the right side. So that tells me, okay, well, I need to try to get this shoe centered and it looks like it's a little low. So I'll raise it up and to me that looks centered, okay? So then I'll try putting this on again. close. Feels like, feels like it's still hitting one of the shoes a little bit. It actually feels like it's hitting the left shoe. I'm going to guess that the left shoe is a little bit high, so I'll just push it down a little bit. I pushed it down there a little bit. Actually, it looks like the left shoe uh, it looks like the, the whole shoe assembly is to the right a little bit too far, so I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to try to press both shoes to the left. Uh, and that basically means that the brake cylinder here is, is going to oscillate to the left. Okay, so that moved it a little bit to the left, and so now Try again. What? Look at that. Slid right on. And so, this is an important note. That's how easily a brake drum should slide on. Um, I made the mistake before, the last time I did this, that uh, the brake drum did not want to slide on. It was meeting quite a bit of resistance and um, I tried banging it on with a hammer um, and in hindsight the problem was that I did not have those shoes adjusted in far enough and so I needed to bring them in further. So if you meet resistance it means that it's it's hitting the brake shoes which means that you need to move the brake shoes either move them in or move them just wiggle them around to get them centered like I just did um, because that's how easily a brake drum should go on. It should almost be a one-handed operation. Um, so I'm actually going to pull this back off. So it looks like it's good to go. Uh, it looks like it's it's going on all the way, um, and it'll probably pull up a little more when I put the, when I put the nut on it. I'm going to put this nut on it on the axle axle stub. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it off once again. Just check everything. Make sure everything looks okay. Okay, so on the brake drum side, everything looks pretty good. There's a little bit of paper towel residue. I put a little bit of lubricant in there uh, just to uh, clean up, um, clean up the actual stub and to hopefully act as a little bit of a corrosion inhibitor. But I'm going to go ahead and wipe out some of that just because uh, your brakes rely on friction to work and so you you really do not want any lubricant of any kind getting on your brake, uh, your braking surfaces, which would be the outside of the pads and the inside of the drum. And so just to make sure that does not happen, I'm just going to go ahead and wipe a little bit of this out um, just so that, you know, it's not likely to get on the braking surfaces. See a little little pool of little pool of uh, rust inhibitor down in the bottom. So there, I just wipe that out. So I think that's good. I I would have faith that the little bit of residue that's still in there um, will stay in place. It's it should not run anywhere. It should not get on the rotor. It's just a, a light film that's in there on the steel parts. We want to make sure the axle stub is clean here. Same thing with the threaded portion of the axle stub. So, take the drum, slide it back on. And I'll say that if, if your brake pads aren't positioned absolutely perfectly in the center, uh, it's okay as long as they're close. 
uh, your, your brakes will self-align, will self-adjust once you go to use them. So this ratcheting mechanism will actually ratchet back out if it needs to. Uh, your brakes will wiggle around, will center themselves on the rotor. So, you know, don't, don't feel like you have to um, get out your micrometer and get all these things lined up. You just want to make sure that you're not having to fight to get it on. And again, the interior surfaces of the brake drum should be free from um, lubricant. And we already cleaned them the other day. There we, there we go. Okay, so now we'll put the nut back on. So I'll say that this nut um, got damaged somehow, it, uh, it seemed because I, I tried the other day to just thread it back on with my hand and it would not go back on. And so uh, I had to run a tap through it and you'll see a picture of that now. And I ran a tap through it, and it, uh, it seemed to um, now be, be really good. So uh, it's, it's called a lock nut, but I don't think it uh, should have had the thread damage that it had. Um, I, I don't think that was intentional to give it a locking, uh, a locking characteristic. So it is now, it threads on much like a normal nut, and uh, it will need to be torqued down to a specific torque while rotating the brake drum to make sure that everything's free. So now I'll just thread it back on by hand here. And so I don't know if I damaged the nut when I took it off the first time or if uh, there was a little bit of uh, dirt on the, on the threads of the axle stub when I took the nut off and the nut got damaged, uh, you know, as it ran over that debris. Um, I kind of thought I saw a little bit of a, of a chip on the axle stub in one spot of the thread. So it feels like that's, that's contacting the brake drum now. So, or contacting the wheel bearing. So in the middle of the brake drum is the wheel bearing uh, on, on this car. So, uh, so that nut goes against the wheel bearing. So you can see the brake drum rubs a little bit in a specific spot. The, uh, the drum might be just a little bit out of round, just a, a few thousandths, and um, hopefully that will uh, correct itself over time here as we, as we break it in. This is an inch, inch and an eighth socket. I think it's actually calls for a metric socket. So we're gonna tighten this to 175 foot pounds. And they say to rotate this as you're tightening it. Hundred seventy five foot pounds is, is a lot for this uh, particular position. This is where it becomes apparent that my socket is slightly undersized because it doesn't really want to sit on the nut all the way. Adjust this down to 150 foot pounds. See if I'm see if I'm there yet. Okay, so, so I'm at 150. Let's try 160. Okay, so we're at we're at 160. 
try 170. Okay, there's 170. Now we want five more foot pounds. Okay, so I'm going to call that good, actually. Um, I got it to 170 plus foot-pounds, and um, I don't actually know when the last time this torque wrench was calibrated. It felt like it was on there very tight, and so I'm going to say that 170 plus is good enough. So you can see it still spins freely, which is great. So now the next thing is just to put the dust cap back on and then the, uh, the tire. So I'm going to reuse the dust cap from the old brake drum. Um, this is it. So when I took it off, I did dent it in uh, here and here. And uh, I've since tapped it back out pretty well. The outside rim was undamaged uh, because I did not, uh, did not pry on it. And so, it's just a matter of tapping it into the new brake drum. So, good first step is to clean away any debris or junk from the inside of that cavity. And then I'm actually going to spray some rust stopper, some rust inhibitor. This is the same as fluid film uh, inside this cavity. Just to uh, try to keep moisture uh, out of there just in case this would ever let any in. So now I'm just going to rotate it just to check and make sure there aren't any any high spots or low spots. And it looks like there's actually maybe a little bit of a low spot right around here, which is where I was hitting it. I have a feeling though that when I tap that in that that's still going to seal. So I'm going to Spray a little more rust stopper in there, and then tap this back on. Okay, so it, it tightened up there. So you can push it in about halfway by hand. Okay. So, uh, at this point, it's just to put the tire on. That's all that's left to do. So these are the new lug nuts. Um, I had them on there just to keep the threads protected while I was working with the brake drum. So on the back side of your wheels, um, so these are aluminum wheels, and so there's obviously nothing to rust, but sometimes you can get salt or moisture buildup on the back side of your wheels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray this whole face with rust inhibitor, just to try to prevent corrosion on the face of the brake drum. Okay. So then you just take your, your lug nuts and start at the bottom, because that's the where the wheel wants to swing out due to gravity.
So these are these take a 1316 socket. Uh, I'm just going to sense them up with this stubby Milwaukee gear. So this is not an impact socket, so I'm not going to uh, you know use the impact function very much. I'm just going to snug them up. So now it's time to torque down the wheel nuts. So when you torque your lug nuts, just make sure that you follow the manufacturer recommendation or specification uh, that can typically be found in your owner's manual. So for this car, it is 100 foot-pounds. So we're going to set our torque wrench to 100 foot-pounds. Right there. and. Something that you'll obviously see is when you go to tighten the lug nuts, it wants to spin the wheel. So all you have to do is chalk the wheel or set the parking brake. So you can see that since these are new brake pads, um, the parking brake is not has not adjusted those brake pads out like we talked earlier with that ratcheting mechanism. So I'm gonna try again. So I released it and then pulled it up, pulled the parking brake up a little further. You can see it's rubbing a little bit, but not enough. So we'll do it again. Release the parking brake and then pull it up further. You can see it's rubbing a little bit more. Getting a little bit more each time, I think. I think this process of letting the brakes out is typically done with the vehicle moving. So, you know what I'm going to do is uh, chalk the wheel. Double check them. Okay. And that is the end of today's brake job. I'm going to try it holding uh Try compressing the spring clip with some needle nose pliers there. It takes a little bit of a delicate touch here. Okay. okay, I'm going to get a different set of pliers. 